Hello everyone, I recently helped my friend Anders build this crazy cool uh, gaming computer on the wall where you can't see anything on the screen and we use it to play the game Heroes of Might and Magic 3 which is a turn-based game. You have this small display here telling you whose turn it is and once you, once you put on this helmet you can see what's going on. So this is the game here and uh, yeah, today I thought I would show you how this is done and um, Enjoy. Okay, that intro was kind of confusing, so I'll go ahead and uh, show you this diagram that I created to show you the project in more detail. So we start off over here with the computer. So this is a normal computer, except that it is wall mounted and the outer parts of the screen is actually removed. And um, we've put that inside this helmet down here. So if you look closely here, you can actually see it has some sort of filter in front. And what happens is that when you put the helmet on, you can see the contents on the screen. Okay, how does this work? I have no clue. Okay, Perfect. next up uh, we have Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which is what you are going to see on the display because that is the game that we are playing. So Heroes is a game that is played by a group of people all on the same computer. And because of this, it is kind of important that you don't sneak peek at your friends playing. So that's why we created the whole helmet thing. Now, this is my friend Anders idea and uh, he's the one that created this whole part of the project. So if you're interested in checking that out, he actually has a video himself where he covers the physical build of stuff. But in this video, I thought we would do a deep dive in the Python part of the project because we've actually coded some stuff that makes this all even better. So in addition to the display, you can see it on this picture here, but there's actually a small LCD display and next to it that shows the player name that's the current turn. So here it says my name, Dizak, and uh, that means that it's safe for me to put on the helmet to do the turn. Now, this text is set uh, through a Python program, and what it also does is that it sends a message to a Slack channel, letting the players of the game know whenever it's uh, a new player's turn. So when it goes from Isak to Anders, we're gonna get a message on Slack saying, yo, Anders, now it's your turn. So yeah, that's sort of a <laughs> rough view of the project. I hope that made some more sense. And now let's view the code. The main challenge when programming this project was of course to figure out which player's turn it is. So this is a screenshot from uh, inside a game of uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. And what's special about each player is that they are given a color when the game first starts. So this player is red and you can see it by the bottom bar here, which is the color of the player. So if this were to be a blue player, this color would be blue. So I thought I could use this to quite easily determine which player's turn it is. And yeah, I ended up with some code looking something like this. So since all of the code for this project is actually on the Heroes machine itself, I'll have to sort of deconstruct it piece by piece. And uh, yeah, I think you'll, you'll get an idea of how things are done, but it might not be one to one. But anyways, I'm using the library called PyAutoGUI. And using that, I define a pixel X location and a pixel Y location. So my thought here was to try to figure out where on the screen this is. And finding this exact location turned out to be more difficult than expected. So I created this function, capture re region around pixel, where I capture, here I capture a region of 100 pixels around my target pixel. So I did this maybe 10 times to try to figure out exactly where. So I can do this actually to give an example. So if I here throw in my pixel X and pixel Y locations, and if we then go ahead and run this, heroes.py, you can see that it saved a screenshot, tracked pixel region, 
And if I open this, you can see it's somewhere here on the bottom of my display. And what's, what was super annoying about this was that when running on my Mac, it only captured screenshots of my desktop wallpaper because you have to give some special permissions on Mac to capture Windows. And I didn't figure that out. But when I started running it on the Windows computer, it it made more sense. So yeah, that's how I found the pixel locations. And then in the code, I can use this get pixel color XY function. I can go ahead and run that. Once the position, which I hard coded at the top here was good. I used it later in my code like this, get pixel color to determine which player's turn it is. So pixel X, pixel Y. If I go ahead and run this, I should get an RGB value like this 90 137 177 so after knowing all of the different colors i also hard coded in a dictionary of the different colors these are just examples red green and blue and their associated names so isaac anish and bim spete okay so let's take a quick look at how the actual program loop functioned so the program starts and I and I save a RGB color in a variable called last color. Then I start a while loop, saving another color yet again in a variable called current color. I then compare the current color to the last color. And if it is not the same, I can make the assumption that, hey, the turn has changed. So that's, that's what happens here. And I then use the dictionary from earlier and try to get uh, the player name using the current color. And if that fails, it should say unknown player. But yeah, that doesn't happen if everything is set up correctly. But I then print, okay, the turn has changed and I update the last color value. And then I wait two seconds here, just some random time. Okay, so. With this being the program function loop, I could then start adding the Slack functionality and the OLED functionality. So maybe we can take a quick look at the OLED stuff first. This is some sample code that writes a name to the OLED. So I start off by using the zero library, first of all. I then set which port the Arduino is connected to that is running the OLED screen. I then have a function here called send text to OLED, which simply uh, writes to the serial port some text. And um, using this, I can cycle through the names and use the send text to OLED function. So this would actually be put somewhere around here after we have gotten the new player name. I could use send text to OLED and player name like this, but yeah. Now, the code for um, notifying on Slack is actually quite similar. So I start off at the top of my program with hard coding a Slack token, which I'm not going to show you. And then I initialize a client using the web client from the Slack API. And I'm not using that, so I can remove that. And then I created the send Slack message function, which looks like this. So as you can see, there is not a lot of code, which is great. I simply use, I take an input, which would be the player name. And then I use client chat post message function to send to a given channel. So here I send to the hero channel. And then I say, now it's this player's turn. And yeah, that's it. So this would also be put down here in the main loop where I say, okay, send Slack message player name, something like that. And with that, everything is working. So yeah, enjoyed this super short tour of it. And let me know in the comments what you think of this project. And also make sure to check out the YouTube channel of Unnetch, which I will link uh, in the description below. So yeah, enjoy guys.